the week, I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Alan Cochran. Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of former Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott, a typical statesman-like pose. <laughs> but what does PTSD stand for? Penis tickles surprises drunk. Is it put that sausage down? <laughs> Is it, is it Prescott to swallow Dorset? <laughs> How about Prescott's testicles suddenly descend? <laughs> no, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Prescott's tired scrotum disintegrates. <laughs> is he doing an impression of a Japanese highwayman and saying, please to stand and deliver? <laughs> It's off the throat and that was never going to work. Never gonna work. There's, always, there's always a dirty one and then there's somebody who has to take a bullet uh, so the audience get over the dirty one. Thank you very much yeah, for doing that. <laughs> Could it be Posh's terrible surgery disaster? <laughs> Is it just pies, twixes, sausages, dumplings? <laughs> Then it's essentially the mother load of Prescott is fat, one, isn't it? <laughs> or is it no, Prescott? The mother load is pulmonary thrombosis, sudden death. <laughs> is it Prescott try shagging donuts? <laughs> no. In fairness, that'd be quite easy, wouldn't it? If you got a ring, one straight through. Is it Prescott? <laughs> you've got a jam one, it's actually much more satisfying. You're right. Yeah. That's why Ed stays around down. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the steering it was the correct answer. Prescott tries speed dating. <laughs> Is it Prescott tries sexy dance? Is it Prescott tries swallowing dwarf? Yes. Prescott's testicles shaved daily. Is it Prescott? Have we got that right? Prescott, you're, 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 you're pretty... Yes. Is it Prescott to stand down? It's exactly the correct answer. Very good. The answer I was looking for was Prescott to stand down, the first of the 69-year-olds announcing that he will retire as an MP at the next election after 37 years in the Commons. He's expected to write his memoirs and enter the House of Lords. 69? He doesn't look bad. Actually, he doesn't look bad for 69. He looks like he's finally found a taste he doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> he's all right though, Prescott, I reckon. Are you okay with Prescott? I've got a fan of Prescott. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna, we're going to suffer as comedians once he's gone. <laughs> He said brilliantly, after he'd had the affair, after he'd had the affair and he'd gone to the ranch with that bloke in the States, but people were mostly thinking about the affair, he went on the Today programme and he said, I want to be judged by how I am on the job. <laughs> I want to see his memoirs, it's going to be like the Doomsday Book of Food. <laughs> 1997 was a very important year for me because Marathon changed its name to Snickers. <laughs> Is it called Sex, Lies and Battenberg Cake? <laughs> Yeah. The life of pies. <laughs> He's been working a lot of directorships now, isn't he? Gangsters, Free Bento, Handles. <laughs> what I like about Prescott is he'll use the money that he makes getting onto the gravy train to create an actual gravy train. We'll be an exhaustive factor soon enough, I think. But brilliantly, he's, the, he's now got a job in uh, Europe, hasn't he? He's yes, he has. representative to some European... Uh, sort of parliament thing, in which he will have the distinction of being the only English politician ever to be simultaneously translated into English. <laughs> he also used to say it was very, de they used to really panic. Every summer there was a thing about how when Tony Blair was on holiday, John Prescott was left in charge of the country and everybody went, oh my God, Prescott's in charge of the country. And you think actually that's much less dangerous than him leaving the country on some parliament, like John Prescott sorting out Middle East peace. So, I'm, here, I'm here to sort out Middle East peace, but frankly, if somebody hits you, twat them. <laughs> so the gist is, when Blair goes away, he was basically the summer prime minister. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. Before. Nice way of putting it. He, this is the first summer in which he hasn't been summer prime minister, and we've had foot and mouth terrorist attacks and giant flooding across the country. Uh, Are you suggesting so, he's some form of overlord? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> but, but seemingly, he was quietly playing a blinder uh, for all these years. <laughs> he could have prevented the flooding if he just lay down next to the river. <laughs> a human flood bank. <laughs> so that kind of doesn't stuff. stop flooding, that just moves flooding further yeah. up the river. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't know as much about flood defences as you do. <laughs> Honestly, though, if, a, if a new London flood barrier is going to cost 20 billion quid, it's worth just dropping him in and see if it works. Yeah. <laughs> it's somewhere so near we we wedge him in first and see how yeah. it works. Yeah. In the, um, although he was an MP for 37 years, 
every time, because he used to be a steward on uh, cruise ships. Yeah. That's where he started. He was a steward on cruise ships. Nicholas Soames is the big, huge, fat one <laughs> from the Conservative Party. Every time John Prescott walked into the chamber to make a point, Nicholas Soames went. Gin and tonic, please, Stuart. <laughs> Nicholas Soames, of course, who was described, wasn't it, when he was like, somebody said, oh, what was it like having sex with Nicholas Soames? And they said, it was like a wardrobe falling on you with a very small key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> it's, an, it's an amazing video from MFI, that. <laughs> <doesn't it? laughs> Falling wardrobes. Um, what won't, while we're discussing this, what won't Camilla Parker Bowles be doing on Friday? Not going to the Diana tribute. It is, yeah. We're not the sure. reason being, of course, is that she shouldn't go. Obviously, yeah. you know, she was the one who's partly responsible for them breaking up in the first place. Who else are they think of inviting that's going to be totally inappropriate? Is James Hewitt going to be there? <laughs> are the paparazzi going to be there? Are they going to invite the safety bloke from Mercedes Benz? <laughs> So she's not responsible for it. Oh, exactly. I think, like, you know, she was responsible for the breakup of the marriage, but it's not responsible for the death of that. I don't think wouldn't have been in Paris if it hadn't been for her. I don't think it's she would. What? 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 Did, did Camilla book her flight? <laughs> <laughs> Camilla, like, doesn't arrive at the party on the back of a scooter taking photographs. I don't really see what's so distasteful. But once again, it's meant that the Daily Express has been able to have headlines every week yeah. on Diana. I mean, who buys the Daily Express? Who is... She's been dead for ten years. Who goes, well, she has been dead for ten years, but I wonder if in the last 24 hours something topical has happened. <laughs> what would be good? What would be good would be if on the day of the memorial, the Daily Express just didn't mention it. Yeah. <laughs> You've literally mentioned it every day, yeah. apart from the early edition on 9-11. <laughs> we already have, don't we, the Diana Memorial, which was supposed to, you know, show the joy and grief of her life. And I think that it's uh, succeeded completely. You know, you've got the joy, haven't you, of splashing about in the fountain, and the grief of slipping over on the leaves and <laughs> smacking your head. <laughs> be a better tribute than not, not to mention the fact that it's shaped like a racetrack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. We've got this horrible fountain and Paris got that wonderful, beautiful, please slow down in the tunnel sign. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult for Camilla to get it right though, isn't it? She can't go to the concert, she can't go to the tribute day. It's hard to think of a time when it will be right for her to attend any Diana event, you know. Oh, and here is Camilla looking resplendent at the Diana paintballing afternoon. <laughs> what I found particularly funny is the way in which the public get angry as if, as if they have any say in this. Yeah. As if, you know, no, she shouldn't be queen. No, it's a monarchy. You don't get to pick. <laughs> the way a monarchy works. <laughs> you see, if you want a presidency, vote for a president. But you're either one way or the other. You can't go, ah, oh, we should have her. And uh, the She is essentially in this situation, she is that relative who you invite to the wedding in the fervent hope that they can read through the lukewarm tone of the card and go, let's not go. Um, you know, yes. uh, two more seats for my college friends. <laughs> Do you know why she's not going? It's because the Queen's advisor told the Queen that she shouldn't go. And you find that must be such a dull job being the Queen's advisor. Like that. Honey or jam on the tap? Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she wasn't going because she was running in the court past three at Chepstow. You know when? Um, you know that? You know you get those? You know you get those Great. celebrity sat navs now. You can actually get a Diana one. Yeah. It just keeps saying, "Put your foot down." I think we can lose them. Welcome to material that won't be broadcast. So much yet. Yeah. <laughs> you can do a card at the start, and you can write down stuff I won't expect to see when this goes down. <laughs> you can do it as a gamble with your mates. That's not going in. Oh, I think they might risk that one. Uh, uh, it's also the anniversary of Elvis dying this month, isn't it? They're becoming strangely confused, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. People, well, people still think that Elvis faked his death. Surely, if you were going to fake your death. It wouldn't be in a shitting-related accident. <laughs> It'd be doing something brave, rescuing a wee boy from a river. Surely not a jobby-related heart attack. It's not how I'd like to remember. You always criticise Camilla's possible attendance, by the way. Was it Ray Mears, the survivalist? <laughs> When pressed for a comment, uh, no, it was, obviously it was, it was the Daily Mail possibly took it too far. Uh, the Daily Mail's quote was, if, but her attendance said, had Camilla attended on Friday, they would all have been damned. <laughs> That's not over the top in any way whatsoever. Do you know, I've done a computer program that works out what the Daily Mail's average headline is, and it's asylum seekers carry a new type of AIDS that lowers house prices. <laughs> 
Well, who, who won't be there? Do you know who won't be there? Ray Mears. Ray Mears no, won't be no, there. No, Ray Mears won't be there. Osama Bin Laden won't be there. there. It's a much longer list than who will be yeah, there. It is. Well, well, have you got the list there? Fantastic. What about both the chuckles? Because they won't be there. No, one, no. Of them, one of them is going. That's why they're splitting up on the day. Uh, <laughs> Terry. Terry Chuckle. Uh, Terry. <laughs> Barry. 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 Barry and the one who looks like Peter. <laughs> <laughs> So what if it's more like a pedo? But if they were separated, you'd both know. The you're last, both, uh, the last <laughs> thing you want to hear from a pedo is to me to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest, on my not getting in bingo, <laughs> I'm putting a little tick by that one. <laughs> Irish comedian Kevin Hayes used to do a very good joke about the fact that everyone thought Lady Diana was so great just because she shook hands with a few AIDS victims. Freddie Mercury used to fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> also, not getting in. It is. <laughs> The Queen won't be there, because she's on her holidays. How does the Queen know if she's on holiday? She doesn't fucking do anything. <laughs> Week. Is it work or a holiday? I have no idea. <laughs> I wander around waving at people. <laughs> it will be work. <laughs> I'm talking of people who don't do anything for work. Obviously, Prince Harry, he was supposed to be in Iraq, wasn't he? They decided all not to take him because he actually works, doesn't he, for the household cavalry. And part of his job is actually looking after the Queen. So he was probably looking for a job working from home, wasn't he? <laughs> you know, roll out of bed. You all right, Gwen? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Great. Back to bed again. <laughs> Give him a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Household cavalry does sound like you sort of clean George Foreman grills all day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't I'll never get this house done. Yeah. Would you call the cavalry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they'd have to be that cavalry. Yeah. <laughs> Are you called the cavalry? Like minstrels. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, I want to do the black of my minstrels. Uh, <laughs> do you think the royals get to meet any real people? I reckon everyone they meet is some kind of secret agent. Like, even like Harry's girlfriend will be like a transsexual Gurkha. <laughs> she won the slut contest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think you get to be Prince Harry's girlfriend? She's probably not by edge with a slut contest. Yes, it's a... <laughs> The slot point test is they have to try and pick up the royal orb using only their vaginal muscles. <laughs> An event which they drop from it's a royal knockout. <laughs> <laughs> You just get to be a judge at the slut contest. <laughs> <laughs> you like be there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this, not the weak lad. Yeah. Yeah. More, yeah. more <laughs> wet on the t-shirt, please. Where's the hassle cafe? Wet the t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People do love Diana, which is why they've got the Diana Society. She was voted, wasn't she, the third greatest Briton of all time. Now, I did have a, a few problems with that particular poll. Number 17, greatest Britain of all time, Michael Crawford. <laughs> Just ahead of Michael Faraday, Stephen Hawking and Alexander Fleming. <laughs> so the great British public had obviously gone, well, the invention of penicillin, electricity and the Big Bang Theory. Not bad. <laughs> but not quite as good as roller skating underneath a lorry whilst wearing a tank top going, ooh, Betty. <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hewitt Allen. Now we play a round called Monsters of Muck. <laughs> this game involves Alan, Andy, Frankie, and Ed. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, etc. on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner is the team. I just have the best stuff. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. First subject is kids. Who wants to come in that? Edward. <coughs> uh, I had a great window recently into what it's like to have a child. I was on the tube in London, and there was a woman there with her kid. And I know it was her kid, because the kid said the word mum about 500 times. <laughs> You know, one of those kids that just keeps going off like an alarm clock. Mum, 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 mum. And every now and again she'd go, what? But it was just like pressing snooze. <laughs> she'd be off again a few minutes. And every time she'd say, what? The kid would say something really innocuous and boring. Like, you could almost see the woman weighing it up in her head. Was that more or less irritating than the sound of it going, mum, mum, mum? <laughs> mum, 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 what? That man has a hat. <laughs> 
she didn't say this though. She said the funniest thing I've ever overheard on public transport about the eighth time the kid did it. Kid's going, mum, 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 mum. And without even looking, the woman just went, I can't believe how happy I was the first time you said that word. <laughs> Okay, let's spin the wheel again. And the topic is the smoking ban. Alan Cock. Uh, I'm a big fan of the smoking ban. As a uh, non-smoker and a keen drinker, for me, the end of the Blair government was just wonderful because they brought in 24-hour drinking and banned smoking. There were some nights where it was like I had my own prime minister. I was <laughs> just sitting in watching the news and Blair would be looking out going, go on, Alan, have a good night out. <laughs> Drink till four without going to a nightclub if you want. When you wake up the next day, just put the clothes straight on. You won't even smell. It's wonderful. We're saving about three pounds a month on soap powder, which I don't know about you, but I'm putting directly into a lager fund. <laughs> but my main tipple of choice when I go out is the uh, bottles of Sol or Corona, because you know it comes with a little wedge of lime in it, and that counts towards your five a day. <laughs> Very good, Alec Parker. Okay, that leaves it with Andy and Frankie. Let's in the wheel. The next topic is television. Frankie. <laughs> the, only, uh, the only TV award I've ever been nominated for was a Scottish BAFTA. A Scottish BAFTA. It's like hearing that the animals have their own Olympics. <laughs> you hear all that stuff about TV being fake. Of course it's faked. It's all faked. You know that documentary a couple of weeks ago about tribal warfare among monkeys? That was all filmed in a Yates's wine lodge in Dundee. <laughs> Comic relief is faked. Everybody in Africa is fine. <laughs> I saw a documentary about Paris Hilton, and this could just be a story, but it said that when she was in jail, the warders put sperm into her porridge. That must have been a horrible moment for her. Oh, there's porridge in this. <laughs> Okay, Andy, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the Global warming is what that represents. Apparently, right, we will have more extremes of weather. Now, we're lucky we live in a moderate country, right? Rest of the world, they have a tornado, an earthquake, thousands dead, homes destroyed, large-scale devastation. We in Britain, we have a tornado, well, two chimney pots cracked, one cat missing, one frozen chicken looted from Iceland. <laughs> Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories. Alan, which category would you like? Nature, please. Okay, your category <coughs> is nature. The answer is sparrows, otters and hedgehogs. What is the question? What does Hugh Fernley Whittingstall's breath smell of? <laughs> <laughs> What is the least popular Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavor? <laughs> what is the top selling porn mag in Norfolk? <laughs> <laughs> Who are the entrants in Simon Cowell's new TV show, The Woodlands Got Talent? <laughs> is it, what does Bill Oddie scream at the point of orgasm? <laughs> Rate these animals in order of the loudest bang they make when put on a bonfire. <laughs> Starting with the least painful, rate these animals in shag ability. <laughs> Is it, as a child, what did I dress in military uniforms to reenact the Battle of Stalingrad? <laughs> the German forces being played by a lawnmower? <laughs> Name three colloquial terms for a lady's vagina. <laughs> Show us your hedgehog. Yeah. Is it what are waiting patiently in a queue to get into Richard Gere's arse? <laughs> Won't be getting in. <laughs> what, is there a bouncer on the arse? Yeah. <laughs> not with spines, mate, not tonight. <laughs> What's on the menu at a gypsy wedding? <laughs> And you got the correct answer? According what's, to... What's been put, what's recently been put on the endangered species list? That's absolutely it is. Well done, Ed Brown. Absolutely, it's very good. Yeah.
Yes, the question I was looking for is name three endangered species on a recently updated government list. On the list are over a thousand plants and animals, a number that has doubled in the last decade. Significant new additions include hedgehogs, house sparrows and salmon. Why are they becoming endangered now? Any ideas? Because they can't find them. That's it. It's not because... Well, no, it is. Basically, the, the <laughs> field mice, there's a field mouse that's the size of a 2P, and they've gone, no, we can't find them. But I reckon they, the mice just react in the same way we do when we see people with clipboards, you know, trying to get charity like that, going, oh, there they are, hi. <laughs> they've gone, party time, party time for the mice. <laughs> They do reckon it's tidy gardens, don't they? They reckon that the yeah. gardens are too tidy, so sparrows, otters and hedgehogs are all... They're, they're, they're dying. But really, they should just move. Because there's some really shitty gardens, isn't there? There's <laughs> gardens that are overgrown where they could have a fridge and a mattress as well, if they really thought about it on some estates. You, 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 you need to short sight us on behalf of the office. Maybe it's time yeah. for them to get on the property ladder and have their own gardens. <laughs> At this stage where sparrows and otters are becoming extinct. I mean, the next series of Spring Watch is going to be like Schindler's List. <laughs> Just all shown in black and white with a little robin's red breast. <laughs> a lot of these smuggling badgers through Belgium. <laughs> it's going to be horrific. I'd watch that. Yeah, 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 what you got there? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. A lot of animals that are, not just in Britain, but that are around the endangered species list, that kind of deserve to be. Like pandas, giant pandas. Yes, they're very cute and all that. But the reason they're endangered is because they won't have sex with each other. <laughs> which is a crap reason to be endangered. If you can't be arsed humping yourself off the endangered species list, then you're not worth saving. Do you know what they do? You used to come to be a practice as pandas. We gave them every chance. Uh, they do. They do. They do. They do. They do. They do. They've been making panda porn. They have, yeah. The Absolutely. I've seen it. It's honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely. No, but, it, but they genuinely, it's a bizarre thing that they, they've showed them the panda porn in zoos in China and the, uh, the pandas don't respond. Presumably they're just sat there going, bit creepy. <laughs> Place, though. Yeah. If you've got two animals that don't have sex anyway, why don't we point a camera at them and get them to have sex in front of that? Bamboo, come on, come on, Ling Ling, pull out, give us the bamboo shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess the reason why they don't have sex with each other is when you look at them, they obviously just look at each other and go, ah, let's just cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> the pandas want to die. The pandas want to die out and we're forcing them to have sex. Imagine that in your deathbed, some zookeeper's trying to make you hunt someone. <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Extinction, is it? <laughs> I mean, it's less stuff to have to learn to teach your kids. Yeah. What's that, Daddy? Well, it's a dog, because there's only dogs left. Because <laughs> <laughs> we like them. Yeah. <laughs> we need to keep going. Uh, I'm not allowed to kill anything. I live, I've moved out of the country now, and my missus won't let me kill anything. Because something else always eats it. When you're in the middle of the city, she yeah. allowed you to go out and kill yeah. it. Yeah. What kind of tramp? It wasn't a big <laughs> I've taken and killed it. And you know it's it's want to die. <laughs> I tell you, it's bizarre. You said that because it's basically it's just Darwinism and the animals are changing to adapt to us. And have you seen what um, birds in the city now apparently sometimes mistake car, horn, car horns and ringtones for mating calls? Mm. Which is just hilarious. Just the idea of some poor bird. The next time you honk your car, basically you're turning on a bird. You know? <laughs> just this bird flying over going, you're right, lads, I'm in love. What does she sound like? A little bit like na 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 <laughs> The problem, though, is that more and more people have got cats, and they're yes. killing all yeah. of the little creatures. <laughs> yes. My yes. next-door neighbour's cats, they come over, kill all the little things in my garden, and then do a shit. <laughs> and the next-door neighbour goes, oh, it's all right, they're marking their territory. And I'm thinking, it's not its territory, it's my territory. I didn't have to have a crap in my own garden just to keep the cat out. If their cat's going to come into my garden and have a crap, I should go into their bloody kitchen have a crap in their cat tray. I, I have two cats and they, they do, they murder everything. And, they, and then they bring everything back, like, they're the flip side. Bring, and even if they haven't quite murdered it, and, like, stuff you'd expect, you know, mice and birds, but frogs. Like, I've often, I've, I've been interrupted, I watch the television and I hear this, <laughs> which is the sound of a distressed oh, frog. Yeah, frogs yeah, yeah. make horrible noises. They don't they? <laughs> It's really, really evil, high-pitched kind of thing. It's, like, bit... it's, it's a weird diorama you walk out, like, and there's a frog screaming for his life, and a cat looking at you in a kind of a, yeah. Uh, <laughs> go back to the Sopranos. <laughs> there's nothing to see here. <laughs> that frog sounded a bit like Amy Winehouse. Hmm? That frog sounded a bit like Amy Winehouse. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
a cat for Which the Which is better, cats or dogs? Now, to me, it should be fairly obvious. Imagine guide cats for the blind. <laughs> That'd be rubbish, yeah. wouldn't it? You know, crawling up fences, walking along walls, <laughs> hiding under parked cars. That'd muck the blind people right up. <laughs> I put in the shop and it would just lose interest and fall asleep. I did, uh, and just, I did a te oh. terrible thing in Australia. There was a bloke, and it was, I saw the dog. I didn't realise he was a guide dog, and I had some chocolate on me. So I kind of went, you know what I mean? Flung it, and just saw this poor bloke go... <laughs> A little bit less. <laughs> I once, uh, my girlfriend had a dog and I shaved all its hair off as a spaniel and then I, I laid all the hair out on the ground. Oh my god! Like it was just a sort of flattened thing like that. <laughs> and when she came back, I went, bit of an accident. <laughs> she left me not long after that. <laughs> are we getting close to the truth as to where all these animals are now going? Yeah. <laughs> Completely roaming the country. Uh, she she must have gone mental. She burst into tears yeah. and then left me about two weeks later, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks later, when she came back, they only got three legs. She thought, well, that's it. it. <laughs> I, I should go now, but he'll be. I, I go now, Frankie, but he'll be freezing. Uh, uh, what is the story uh, with these um, animals here? They're orphaned hedgehogs. They are orphaned they hedgehogs. They cling to a brush because it reminds them of their mother. <laughs> well, that's, just, that's, just the, that's just the image that we've put onto that picture. Yeah. I mean, they could view that brush as a sex doll. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, that's a hedgehog gangbang. Frankie's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a really nice story and made it horrible now, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually know the details. It's not really that nice a story. It's These a hedgehogs story. have been orphans. It's sad. Okay, you like a nice story about orphans, do you? <laughs> oh, the mother's dead. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Great stories about or are yeah. about orphans. Every fairy tale is about orphans. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Another orphan. Oh, sorry. Oh, now you suddenly go, hang on, yeah, orphans. Not all of them. Yeah, excuse me, yeah. these yeah. haven't discovered magical powers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just as orphans. far as you they know. Can. They believe that the mother is a shoe brush. <laughs> Did you know that these three are apparently called, <laughs> right, Mary, Mungo and Midge, right, and then the last one's called Slappy, right? <laughs> What a shocking way of naming four hedgehogs. You'd have thought they could have picked four names, you know, that went together. John Paul, George and Ringo. Exactly. Yeah. As, as opposed to, you know, Ron, Hermione, Harry and Bonzo. <laughs> <laughs> they called it Slappy because it won the hedgehog slap contest. <laughs> Maybe it was every time they went to give him a name, they were kind of get and we'll call you... <laughs> All right. Yeah. Have to call you Slappy. What happened to the mum then? The their mum was killed in a... Um, she got hit by a truck. truck. Yeah. Why is it? Hedgehogs it's run like over all the time. Truck. Like, no, never ever do they puncture the tyre. Which means their spikes are crap, really. Isn't it? <laughs> I heard that they should evolve into having tungsten tip spider. Yeah. <laughs> I heard what had happened actually. The mother had been, you know, was a pet, and actually somebody had pulled out all the spikes. And uh, when the when the girl had come back. There was just this bald mother there. You see the little spikes laying out. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a reference back then. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sick fucker, Andy. <laughs> okay. In political news, who's been getting tough on crime this week? The 18th. The 18th. The 18th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cameron around this time. Yes, David Cameron. You're right. Uh, he's way? another of it. Well, because he's, he's panicking that there might be an election. Yes. And so he's just throwing out policies. Willy yeah. nilly. He's in think of a new policy every 15 minutes. <laughs> on the subject of the election, he said, if you look at my leadership as a whole, like the last 18 months, for the vast majority of that, I was ahead. And that is what people will judge me on. Mm -hmm. and go, well, that's, that's not the way it works. Uh, you can't go, well, we were one nil up for 89 minutes. Uh, two late goals that statistically are irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> what does it matter what Cameron says anyway? It's like, it's like Ben Stiller saying that he's going to lower income tax or <laughs> Wayne Rooney committing more troops to Iraq. It's just that you've got to have power for it to have any sort of relevance. Absolutely. Well, he's blaming all, he's blaming video games. Well, he's yeah. saying, he, and rap music as well. Yeah. He's, saying, he's saying he wants to, he'll have regular talks with the music industry oh, really? to try and get wow. them to curb their behaviour. I just love the idea of him gathering Snoop and Fiddy <laughs> around and going, chaps. You're setting a bad example. <laughs> Would you mind awfully just turning it down a bit? That would be great. That would be great. Now I would suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> that was uncanny. Where did Snoop come out? <laughs> now, oh, he's gone. He's doing fizzy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Surely you'd be more like, fuck my dick, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't say that to his face. <laughs> <laughs> When would I ever meet? When would I ever meet? Well, you wouldn't have your showbiz parties. Yeah, do I have them all the time? Uh, 50. This is Ronnie Corbett. Have you two met? <laughs> <laughs> when you meet 
him, even when you meet him, it's not him, it's a transsexual Gurkha. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the whole this world is, works. Is this Ronnie Gordon now? Uh, yeah. For all those years. I came second high. in the slap contest. <laughs> <laughs> so, but do you find the only people that, you know, it does make you violent, but only towards rappers, because rap's so rubbish. You just listen to it, it's just like, it used to be all right, but now it's just, I got this, I got that. But it is very violent. I always think it's weird when you put it on a CD and you basically listen to a man threaten you for 45 minutes. <laughs> and you kind of feel like saying, why are you having a go at me? I bought your album. <laughs> I should be in your cool box. Go, go and threaten someone who doesn't like you. Have a go at me, Dad. He hates you. <laughs> That'd be a great song. Let's get Ed's dad. <laughs> I think it's difficult for David Cameron to tell kids not to listen to hip hop when we all suspect he really likes Enya. <laughs> You can, you can overdo this whole violent films goes to, you know, people copy violent films, because surely in which case people would also copy non-violent films. Surely if that's the case, you could go along to King's Cross, stand in between platforms 9 and 10, <laughs> and watch little kids running up, <laughs> smacking their head on the pillars, desperately trying to find platform 9 and 3 quarters. <laughs> it is funny but, when they do that, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> This will try harder, try harder. You're just not believing enough. You've given yourself the mark, though. <laughs> This whole thing, isn't it, where they're trying to control role models and they're talking about role models for black kids and, and so on. You think, well, kids choose bad role models. That's what they do. They look up to idiots. I mean, who's the role models for white kids? Wayne Rooney. <laughs> He's going to finish his contract at Man U and then be released into the wild. <laughs> Papers are full of all this obscene stuff that his girlfriend buys him. He'd be happy with just a tire on a rope. <laughs> and the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hugh and Alan. <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could all make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see in the performance come in with their suggestions. Okay, here we go. The first subject is things an athletics commentator would never say. Here are the runners in the second heat of the women's 400 metres in order of fuckability. <laughs> I think it's going to be hard to follow that. <laughs> The pole vault. Could there be a more ridiculous fucking thing to do on your Sunday afternoon? <laughs> mm. There's a white man in the final of the 100 metres. Good luck with that. <laughs> that man runs like a panther. And if he could learn to use just two legs, he'd be absolutely <laughs> unbeatable. <laughs> And I've got to say, it's a surprise, yes, the winner of the marathon are four blokes tied together dressed as Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> this should be a laugh. Women running. <laughs> lane one, the UK. Lane two, the USA. Lane three, closed for resurfacing. <laughs> <laughs> and in this final of the women's gymnastics, I have been nailed to my chair for my own good. <laughs> and uh, here come the walkers now, mincing their way into the stadium. <laughs> and we've all got to admit, the long jump is a much more exciting. Now we've found out there's a landmine in the sand. <laughs> and that one at the end must feel like a right cunt. <laughs> Can someone get the door, please? I'm commentating. <laughs> Tragedy in the water polo as most of the horses drown. <laughs> and the urine sample appears to have melted the beaker. <laughs> That's not a good sign. <laughs> London have explained the design of their Olympic logo. Apparently, they threw a paraplegic off a car park and drew a chalk outline around his body. This is a first for athletics. The timekeeper has been hypnotised by the man's wang. <laughs> and in the end, it took a photograph to separate them. The one of him shagging a pole dancer in Nevada. <laughs> These triple jumpers have trained for years to go bouncing along the concrete like retards. <laughs> <laughs> There's the bell! There's the bell! 
Those shorts leave nothing to the imagination. <laughs> They're unable to separate them with a photo, so it's going to have to be a slut contest. <laughs> the next topic is the worst thing to say when running for US president. I intend to withdraw from Iraq, invade some real pussies like Spain. <laughs> oh dear, I'm like George Bush, only less intelligent. <laughs> I will never forget the terrible events of 9-12. <laughs> <clears throat> now I know what you're thinking. A Sagittarius for president, but I have Leo rising. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I smoke marijuana, and I inhaled just now. <laughs> There are no skeletons in my closet, just a black latex dildo suit. I would like you to call me <laughs> President Shawada Wada. I have a magnificent war record. It's Pints of Peace by Paul McCartney. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that 9-11 gave me a right boner. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just want to appeal to white voters. I also want to reach out to chinks, wops, and negroes. <laughs> Please vote for me. If I get into the White House, my husband Bill promises to gobble me off. <laughs> Read my lips. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you that. that I've got a bad one. Okay. Bad one. Uh, while well, psychology, I did experiment with marijuana. I did it in snow, I did it in sleet, but I did not inhale. <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Russell, Ed and Andy! And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Alan Cochran. Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard. Watch Mock the Week tonight on BBC Two. It could be your last chance to hear jokes about John Prescott. Apparently, he's quite fat. <laughs> Mock the Week, tonight at nine. Oh, Scott, you have to do it again, you, and you have to smile. I'm smiling. Yeah. We're in this, yeah? Yeah, you're in this fucking oh, job. Yeah, you have to look like, oh, fuck this shit. Uh, I wasn't smiling because I was just, I was wondering. I don't care, wait, you weren't smiling, I want to get out of here. Shut up. Uh, I just wanted to know what the restaurant might be about. Okay, fine, okay, cool. It's about army training. <laughs> okay, okay. Watch Mock the Week tonight on BBC Two. It could be your last chance to hear jokes about John Press. Ah, fuck, come on. Uh, fuck. Yeah. Okay. No. I was smiling that time. <laughs> Leave him alone. He's my best friend. <laughs> Stop. One week it's Connie Hook. This week it's you. Uh, rolling. Watch Mock the Week tonight on BBC Two. It could be your last chance to hear jokes about John Prescott. Apparently he's quite fat. We'll mention that. Mock the Week at nine. <laughs> Do you know what you should watch after the restaurant? The bill. Failing that. That's a terrible joke, isn't it? Uh, I think it's a good joke, but you got nothing. Anyway, I'll do it again. You can fucking laugh this time. Uh, do you know what you watch after the restaurant? The bill. The bill. bill. Yeah, yeah. Actually, should we the mint first on ITV yeah. play? And then the bill. Yeah. yeah. You don't get your bill after oh, you leave shut the up. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. You're demoted. You're on. You're on. After that the restaurant, you should watch The Taxi Hub. <laughs> and some poon tag. Uh, okay.
the week, I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Alan Cochran. Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of former Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott, a typical statesman-like pose. <laughs> but what does PTSD stand for? Penis tickles surprises drunk. Is it put that sausage down? <laughs> is, it, is it Prescott to swallow Dorset? <laughs> How about Prescott's testicles suddenly descend? <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. 69. Oh, 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 I think it's Prescott's tired scrotum disintegrates. <laughs> Is he doing an impression of a Japanese highwayman and saying, please to stand and deliver? <laughs> Is it after scrotum? That was never going to work. Never gonna work. There's, always, there's always a dirty one, and then there's somebody who has to take a bullet uh, to be able to get over the dirty one. Thank you very much <laughs> for doing well. that. <laughs> Could it be Posh's terrible surgery disaster? <laughs> Is it just pies, twixes, sausages, dumplings? <laughs> that is essentially the mother load of Prescott is fat, isn't it? Or is it Prescott? The mother load is pulmonary thrombosis, sudden death. <laughs> is it Prescott try shagging donuts? <laughs> no. In fairness, that'd be quite easy, wouldn't it? If you got a ring one, straight through. Is it Prescott? <laughs> you've got a jam one, is actually much more satisfying. You're right, actually. <laughs> That's why Ed stays around yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> the steward was the correct answer. Prescott tries speed dating. <laughs> That's not this. Is it Prescott tries sexy dance? Is it yeah. Prescott tries swallowing dwarf? Yeah. Prescott's testicles shaved daily. <laughs> Is it Prescott? Have we got that right? Prescott, you're, 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 you're pretty... Yes. Yeah. Is it Prescott to stand down? It's exactly the correct answer. Very good. The answer I was looking for was Prescott to stand down, the first of the 69-year-olds announcing that he will retire as an MP at the next election after 37 years in the Commons. He's expected to write his memoirs and enter the House of Lords. 69? He doesn't look bad. Actually, he doesn't look bad for 69. He looks like he's finally found a taste he doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> he's all right though, Prescott, I reckon. You okay with Prescott? I've got a fan of Prescott. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna, we're going to suffer as comedians once he's gone. <laughs> He said brilliantly, after he'd had the affair, after he'd had the affair and he'd gone to the ranch with that bloke in the States, but people were mostly thinking about the affair, he went on the Today programme and he said, I want to be judged by how I am on the job. <laughs> I want to see his memoirs, it's going to be like the Doomsday Book of Food. <laughs> 1997 was a very important year for me because Marathon changed its name to Snickers. <laughs> Is it called Sex, Lies and Battenberg Cake? <laughs> Yeah. The life of pies. <laughs> He's been working at a lot of directorships now, isn't he? Gangsters, Free Bento, Handles. <laughs> what I like about Prescott is he'll use the money that he makes getting onto the gravy train to create an actual gravy train. We'll be exhausted with Patrick soon enough, I think. But brilliantly, he's, the, he's now got a job in uh, Europe, hasn't he? He's yes, he has. representative to some European... Uh, sort of parliament thing, in which he will have the distinction of being the only English politician ever to be simultaneously translated into English. <laughs> he also used to say it was very, de they used to really panic. Every summer there was a thing about how when Tony Blair was on holiday, John Prescott was left in charge of the country and everybody went, oh my God, Prescott's in charge of the country. And you think actually that's much less dangerous than him leaving the country on some parliament, like John Prescott sorting out Middle East peace. Going, I'm, here, I'm here to sort out Middle East peace, but frankly, if somebody hits you, twat them. <laughs> so the gist is, when Blair goes away, he was basically the summer prime minister. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nice. Before. Nice way of putting it. Yeah. This is the first summer in which he hasn't been summer prime minister, and we've had foot and mouth terrorist attacks and giant flooding across the country. Uh, Are you suggesting so, he's some form of overlord? Uh, I, <laughs> but, but seemingly he was quietly playing a blinder uh, for all these years. He could have prevented the flooding if he just lay down next to the river. <laughs> a human flood bank. <laughs> Summer Prime that Minister. doesn't stop flooding, that just moves flooding further yeah. up the river. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't know as much about flood defences as you do. <laughs> Honestly, though, if, a, if a new London flood barrier is going to cost 20 billion quid, it's worth just dropping him in and see if it works. Yeah. <laughs> it's somewhere so we'll near we wedge him in first and see how yeah. it works. Yeah. In the, um, although he was an MP for 37 years, every, because he used to be a steward 
on uh, cruise ships. Yeah. That's where he started. He was a steward on cruise ships. Nicholas Soames is the big, huge, fat one <laughs> from the Conservative Party. Every time John Prescott walked into the chamber to make a point, Nicholas Soames went. Gin and tonic, please, Stuart. <laughs> Nicholas Soames, of course, who was described, wasn't it, when he was like, somebody said, oh, what was it like having sex with Nicholas Soames? And they said, it was like a wardrobe falling on you with a very small key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> it's, an, it's an amazing video from MFI, that. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Falling wardrobes. Um, what won't, while we're discussing this, what won't Camilla Parker Bowles be doing on Friday? Not going to the Diana tribute. It is, yeah. We're not the sure. reason being, of course, is that she shouldn't go. Obviously, yeah. you know, she was the one who's partly responsible for them breaking up in the first place. Who else are they think of inviting that's going to be totally inappropriate? Is James Hewitt going to be there? <laughs> are the paparazzi going to be there? Are they going to invite the safety bloke from Mercedes Benz? <laughs> So she's not responsible for it. Oh, exactly. I think, like, you know, she was responsible for the breakup of the marriage, but it's not responsible for the death of that. I don't it wouldn't have been in Paris if it hadn't been for her. I don't think it's... Yes, she what? Was. What? 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 So did did Camilla book her flight? <laughs> <laughs> Camilla, like, doesn't arrive at the party on the back of a scooter taking photographs. I don't really see what's so distasteful. But once again, it's meant that the Daily Express has been able to have headlines every week yeah. on Diana. I mean, who buys the Daily Express? Who is... She's been dead for ten years. Who goes, well, she has been dead for ten years, but I wonder if in the last 24 hours something topical has happened. That <laughs> would be good. What would be good would be if from the day of the memorial, the Daily Express just didn't mention it. Yeah. <laughs> They've literally mentioned it every day, yeah. apart from the early edition on 9-11. <laughs> we already have, don't we, the Diana Memorial, which was supposed to, you know, show the joy and grief of her life. And I think that it's uh, succeeded completely. You know, you've got the joy, haven't you, of splashing about in the fountain, and the grief of slipping over on the leaves and <laughs> smacking your head. <laughs> be a better tribute than not, not to mention the fact that it's shaped like a racetrack. It's brilliant. We've got this horrible fountain and Paris got that wonderful, beautiful, please slow down in the tunnel sign. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult for Camilla to get it right though, isn't it? She can't go to the concert, she can't go to the tribute day. It's hard to think of a time when it will be right for her to attend any Diana event, you know. Oh, and here is Camilla looking resplendent at the Diana paintballing afternoon. <laughs> what I found particularly funny is the way in which the public get angry as if, as if they have any say in this. Yeah. As if, you know, no, she shouldn't be queen. No, it's a monarchy. You don't get to pick. <laughs> monarchy works. <laughs> if you want a presidency, vote for a president. But you're either one way or the other. You can't go, no, oh, we should have her. Uh, she is essentially in this situation, she is that relative who you invite to the wedding in the fervent hope that they can read through the lukewarm tone of the card and go, let's not go. Um, you know, yes. Two more seats for my college friends. <laughs> Do you know why she's not going? It's because the Queen's advisor told the Queen that she shouldn't go. And you find that must be such a dull job being the Queen's advisor. Like that. Honey or jam on the tap? Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she wasn't going because she was running in the court past three at Chepstow. <laughs> you know when? Um, you know that? You know you get those? You know you get those really? celebrity sat navs now. You can actually get a Diana one. Yeah. It just keeps saying, "Put your foot down." I think we can lose them. Welcome to material that won't be broadcast. So much yet. Yeah. <laughs> you can do a card at the start, and you can write down stuff I won't expect to see when this goes out of town. You can do it as a gamble with your mates. That's not going in. Oh, I think they might risk that one. Uh, uh, it's also the anniversary of Elvis sign this month, isn't it? They're becoming strangely confused, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. People, well, people still think that Elvis faked his death. Surely, if you were going to fake your death. It wouldn't be in a shitting-related accident. <laughs> It'd be doing something brave, rescuing a wee boy from a river. Surely not a jobby-related heart attack. <laughs> not how I'd like to remember. <laughs> you always criticise uh, Camilla's possible attendance, by the way. Was it Ray Mears, the survivalist? <laughs> When pressed for a comment, uh, no, it was, obviously it was, it was the Daily Mail possibly took it too far. Uh, the Daily Mail's quote was, if, but her attendance said, had Camilla attended on Friday, they would all have been damned. <laughs> That's not over the top in any way whatsoever. Do you know, I've done a computer program that works out what the Daily Mail's average headline is, and it's asylum seekers carry a new type of AIDS that lowers house prices. <laughs> 
Who, who won't be there? Do you know who won't be there? Ray Mears. Ray Mears no, won't be no, there. No, no, Ray Mears won't be there. Osama Bin Laden won't be there. there. It's a much longer list than who will be yeah, there. It is. But, but, but you've got the list there. Fantastic. What about both the chuckles? Because they won't be there. No, one, no. Of, them, one of them is going. That's why they're splitting up on the day. Uh, <laughs> Terry. Not Terry. Terry chuckle? Uh, Terry. <laughs> Barry. 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 Barry and the one who looks like Peter. <laughs> 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 The one who looks like a pedo. like a pedo, but if they were separated, you'd both know the you're last, both there. The last thing you want to hear from a pedo is to me, to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest, on my not getting in bingo, <laughs> I'm putting a little tick by that one. <laughs> Irish comedian Kevin Hayes used to do a very good joke about the fact that everyone thought Lady Diana was so great just because she shook hands with a few AIDS victims. Freddie Mercury used to fuck them. <laughs> So not getting in. It is. <laughs> the Queen won't be there because she's on her holidays. How does the Queen know if she's on holiday? She doesn't fucking do anything. <laughs> Next week, is it work or a holiday? I have no idea. <laughs> I wander around waving at people. <laughs> it well be work. <laughs> Talking of people who don't do anything for work, obviously Prince Harry, he was supposed to be in Iraq, wasn't he? Who they decided all not to take him, because he actually works, doesn't he? Doreen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne, Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Alan Cochran. <laughs> Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of former Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott in typical statesman-like pose. <laughs> but what does PTSD stand for? Penis tickles surprises drunk. <laughs> is it put that sausage down? <laughs> Is it, is it Prescott to swallow Dorset? <laughs> How about Prescott's testicles suddenly descend? <laughs> no, yeah. 69. Oh, oh, I like it. It's Prescott's tired scrotum disintegrates. <laughs> is he doing an impression of a Japanese highwayman and saying, <laughs> please to stand and deliver? <laughs> Is it after scrotum, that was never going to work. Never gonna work. <laughs> there's, always, there's always a dirty one, and then there's somebody who has to take a bullet uh, so the audience get over the dirty one. Thank you very much <laughs> for doing that. <laughs> Could it be Posh's terrible surgery disaster? <laughs> Is it just pies, twixes, sausages, dumplings? <laughs> then it's essentially the mother load of Prescott. Is <laughs> or is it no, Prescott? The mother load is pulmonary thrombosis, sudden death. <laughs> Prescott tries shagging donuts. <laughs> In fairness, that'd be quite easy, wouldn't it? If you got a ring, one straight. Through. Is it Prescott? <laughs> a bit of jam one is actually much more satisfying. You're right. Actually. <laughs> That's why Ed stays around us. The steer was a correct answer. Prescott tries speed dating. <laughs> That's not is it Prescott tries sexy dance? <laughs> is it yes. Prescott tries swallowing dwarf? <laughs> Prescott's testicles shaved daily. <laughs> Is it Prescott? Have we got that right? Prescott, you're, you're, you're pretty... Yes. Yeah. Is it Prescott to stand down? It's right? exactly the correct answer. Very good. The answer I was looking for was Prescott to stand down. Refers to the 69-year-old's announcement that he will retire as an MP at the next election after 37 years in the Commons. He's expected to write his memoirs and enter the House of Lords. 69? He doesn't look bad. Actually, doesn't look bad for 69. He looks like he's finally found a taste he doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> he's all right, though, Prescott, I reckon. You okay with Prescott? I've got a fan of Prescott. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna, we're going to suffer as comedians once he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> he said brilliantly, after he'd had the affair, after he'd had the affair and he'd gone to the ranch with that bloke in the States, but people were mostly thinking about the affair, he went on the Today programme and he said, I want to be judged by how I am on the job. <laughs> 
to see his memoirs, it's going to be like the Doomsday Book of Food. <laughs> 1997 was a very important year for me because Marathon changed its name to Snickers. <laughs> Is it called Sex, Lies and Battenberg Cake? <laughs> yeah, the life of pies. <laughs> He's been working at a lot of directorships now, isn't he? Gangsters, Free Bento, Sandals. <laughs> What I like about Prescott is he'll use the money that he makes getting onto the gravy train to create an actual gravy train. We'll be an exhaustive of Patrick soon enough, I think. But brilliantly, yeah. he's, the, he's now got a job in uh, Europe, hasn't he? He's yes, some he representative has. to some European uh, sort of parliament thing, in which he will have the distinction of being the only English politician ever to be simultaneously translated into English. <laughs> He also used to say it was very. They used to really panic every summer. There was a thing about how when Tony Blair was on holiday, John Prescott was left in charge of the country, and everybody went, "Oh my God, Prescott's in charge of the country!" And you think actually that's much less dangerous than him leaving the country on some parliament, like John Prescott sorting out Middle East peace. Going, I'm here, I'm here to sort out Middle East peace, but frankly, if somebody hits you, twat them. <laughs> So the truth is, when Blair goes away, he was basically the summer prime minister. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. Cool. Nice way of putting it. He, this is the first summer in which he hasn't been summer prime minister, and we've had foot and mouth terrorist attacks and giant flooding across the country. Uh, Are you suggesting so, he's some form of overlord? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> but, but seemingly, he was quietly playing a blinder uh, for all these years. He could have prevented the flooding if he just lay down next to the river. Yeah. A human flood bank. <laughs> That doesn't stuff. stop flooding, that just moves flooding further yeah. up the river. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know as much about flood defences as you do. <laughs> Honestly, though, if, a, if a new London flood barrier is going to cost 20 billion quid, it's worth just dropping him in to see if it works. Yeah. Well, he, so somewhere so near Tilbury. Yeah. Yeah. In the, um, although he was an MP for 37 years, every t because he used to be a steward on uh, cruise ships, yeah. that's where he started, he was a steward on cruise ships. Nicholas Soames is the big, huge, fat one <laughs> from the Conservative Party. Every time John Prescott walked into the chamber to make a point, Nicholas Soames went. Gin and tonic, please, Stuart. <laughs> Nicholas Soames, of course, who was described, wasn't it, when he was like, somebody said, oh, what was it like having sex with Nicholas Soames? And they said, it was like a wardrobe falling on you with a very small key. <laughs> <laughs> It's an amazing video from MFI, that. <laughs> Falling wardrobes. Um, what won't, while we're discussing this, what won't Camilla Parker Bowles be doing on Friday? Not going to the Diana tribute. It is, yeah. We're not the sure. reason being, of course, is that she shouldn't go. Obviously, yeah. you know, she was the one who was partly responsible for them breaking up in the first place. Who else are they think of inviting that's going to be totally inappropriate? Is James Hewitt going to be there? <laughs> are the paparazzi going to be there? Are they going to invite the safety bloke from Mercedes Benz? <laughs> So she's not responsible for it. Oh, exactly. so I think, like, you know, she was responsible for the break of the marriage, but she's not responsible for the death of Dan. She wouldn't have been in Paris if it hadn't been for her. I don't think it's... She what? Was. What? What? So where's the did Camilla book her fly? <laughs> <laughs> As long as Camilla, like, doesn't arrive at the party on the back of a scooter taking photographs, I don't really see what's so distasteful. But once again, it's meant that the Daily Express has been able to have headlines every week yeah. on Diana. I mean, who buys the Daily Express? Who is... She's been dead for ten years. Who goes, well, she has been dead for ten years, but I wonder if in the last 24 hours, something topical has happened. <laughs> what would be good? What would be good would be if from the day of the memorial, the Daily Express just didn't mention it? <laughs> yeah. We've literally mentioned it every day, yeah, apart yeah. from the early edition on 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> already have, don't we? The Diana Memorial, which was supposed to, you know, show the joy and grief of her life. And I think that it's uh, succeeded completely. You know, you've got the joy, haven't you, of splashing about in the fountain, and the grief of slipping over on the leaves <laughs> and smacking your head. <laughs> be a better tribute than not, that. not to mention the fact that it's shaped like a racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's brilliant. We've got this horrible fountain and Paris got that wonderful, beautiful, please slow down in the tunnel sign. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult for Camilla to get it right though, isn't it? She can't go to the concert, she can't go to the tribute day. It's hard to think of a time when it will be right for her to attend any Diana event, you know. Oh, and here is Camilla looking resplendent at the Diana paintballing afternoon. <laughs> what I found particularly funny is the way in which the public get angry as if, as if, 
they have any say in this. Yeah. As if, you know, no, she shouldn't be queen. No, it's a monarchy. You don't get to pick. <laughs> monarchy works. <laughs> if you want a presidency, vote for a president. But you're either one way or the other. You can't go, ah, oh, we should have her. And uh, Mr. <laughs> she is essentially in this situation, she is that relative who you invite to the wedding in the fervent hope that they can read through the lukewarm tone of the card and go, let's not go. Um, <laughs> you know, yes. like two more seats for my college friends. <laughs> Do you know why she's not going? It's because the Queen's advisor told the Queen that she shouldn't go. And you find that that must be such a dull job being the Queen's advisor. Like that. <laughs> Honey or jam on the tap? Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she wasn't going because she was running in the court past three at Chepstow. <laughs> you know when, um, you know that, you know you get those, you know you get those celebrity sat navs now? You can actually get a Diana one. Yeah. It just keeps saying, put your foot down, I think we can lose them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcast. So much, yeah. <laughs> you give you a card at the start and you can write down stuff I won't expect to see when this goes out of town. <laughs> and you can do it as a gamble with your mates. That's not going in. Oh, I think they might risk that one. Uh, it's also uh, the anniversary of Elvis dying this month, isn't it? They're becoming strangely confused, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. People, well, people still think that Elvis faked his death. Surely if you were going to fake your death, it wouldn't be in a shitting related accident. <laughs> We're doing something brave, rescuing a wee boy from a river. Surely not a jobby related heart attack. <laughs> not how I'd like to remember. You were as criticised uh, Camilla's possible attendance, by the way. Was yeah. it Ray Mears, the survivalist? <laughs> <laughs> when pressed for a comment, uh, no, it was, obviously it was, it was the Daily Mail possibly took it too far. Uh, the Daily Mail's quote was if, about her attendance said, had Camilla attended on Friday, they would all have been damned. <laughs> over the top in any way whatsoever. Do you know, I've done a computer program that works out what the Daily Mail's average headline is, and it's asylum seekers carry a new type of AIDS that lowers house prices. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, who won't be there? Do you know who won't be there? Ray Mears. Ray Mears no, won't be no, there. No, Ray Mears won't be there. Osama Bin Laden. Won't be there. there. It's a much longer list than who will be yeah, there. It is. <laughs> You got the list there. Fantastic. I'm, well, that bugs the chuckles because they won't be there. No, one, uh, of them, one of them is going. That's why they're splitting up on the day. Uh, <laughs> Terry, not Terry, Terry, chuckle. Uh, Terry. <laughs> Barry. 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 The one who was brought like a pedo, yeah. but if they were separated, you'd both know. The, you last, both, uh, the last thing you want to hear from a pedo is to me, to you. <laughs> I've got to be honest, on my not getting in bingo, I'm putting a little tick by that one. <laughs> Irish comedian Kevin Hayes used to do a very good joke about the fact that everyone thought Lady Diana was so great just because she shook hands with a few AIDS victims. Freddie Mercury used to fuck them. <laughs> also, not getting in. It is. <laughs> The Queen won't be there, because she's on her holidays. How does the Queen know if she's on holiday? She doesn't fucking do anything. <laughs> next week. Is it work or a holiday? I have no idea. <laughs> I wander around waving at people. It could well be work. <laughs> Talking of people who don't go out of people work, obviously Prince Harry, he was supposed to be in Iraq, wasn't he? Who they was? decided all not to take him, because he actually works, doesn't he, for the household cavalry. And part of his job is actually looking after the Queen. So he was probably looking for a job working from home, wasn't he? <laughs> Roll out of bed. You all right, Gwen? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Great. Back to bed again. <laughs> Give him a shame, you feel anything, yeah? Household Curry does sound like you sort of clean George Foreman grills all day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I'll never get this house done. Yeah. We should call the cavalry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they'd have to be that cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> and you called the cavalry. Like the white Oh, no, 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 no. No, I wasn't doing the black white minstrels. Uh, <laughs> Do you think the royals get to meet any real people? I reckon everyone they meet is some kind of secret agent. Like, even like Harry's girlfriend, they'll be like a transsexual Gurkha. <laughs> she won the slut contest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think you get to be Prince Harry's girlfriend? She's probably not by entering a slut contest. Yes, it's a... <laughs> the end of the slut contest is they have to try and pick up the royal orb using only their vagina muscles. <laughs> To drop from it's a royal knockout. <laughs> How do you just get to be a judge at the slut country? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you be there. 
<laughs> Fuck this, not the week, lad. Yeah. More, yeah, we'll more wet coming. on the T-shirt, please. Yeah. 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 Where are the household cabinet? Wet the T-shirt. Yeah. People do love Diana, which is why they've got the Diana Society. She was voted, wasn't she, the third greatest Britain of all time. Now, I did have a, a few problems with that particular poll. Number 17, greatest Britons of all time, Michael Crawford. <laughs> Just ahead of Michael Faraday, Stephen Hawking and Alexander Fleming. <laughs> so the great British public had obviously gone, well, the invention of penicillin, electricity and the Big Bang Theory. Not bad. <laughs> But not quite as good as roller skating underneath a lorry whilst wearing a tank top going, ooh, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> and the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hewitt Allen. <laughs> now we play a round called Monsters of Muck. <laughs> <laughs> this game involves Alan, Andy, Frankie, and Ed. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performer's stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, etc. on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winner is a team I judge to have the best stuff. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. First subject is kids. Who wants to come in that? Edward. <coughs> uh, I had a great window recently into what it's like to have a child. I was on the tube in London, and there was a woman there with her kid. And I know it was her kid, because the kid said the word mum about 500 times. <laughs> You know one of those kids that just keeps going off like an alarm clock? Mum, 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 mum. And every now and again she'd go, what? But it was just like pressing snooze. <laughs> be off again a few minutes. And every time she'd say, what? The kid would say something really innocuous and boring. Like, you could almost see the woman wailing up in her head. Was that more or less irritating than the sound of it going, mum, mum, mum? Mum, mum, mum.